Hellraiser from 2022? They remade Hellraiser? Theme song. Kyle Gibbs! Kyle Gibbs! If you want to see Hellraiser from 2022, see the link in the description below. Now, I vaguely remember there being talk of doing a remake of Hellraiser, but I'd forgotten all about it until I saw this pop up on Hulu. Now, the Hellraiser series has been going downhill pretty much since it started. Um, and I know at least one movie was just sort of rushed into production so the company wouldn't lose the rights. So the fact that it went direct to Hulu and didn't get a, a, a theatrical release is kind of par for the course. But I will say this movie is definitely a step up from the last one I saw, which was like four or five. And there have been at least four more since then. So, I, I mean, it's a remake, but it kind of doesn't have to be because they're all, you know, it can be, it doesn't, it, it's not related to the first, the, the plot line in the original movie or the sequels, but it's all about finding a box, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be a totally new thing. But what's this one about? This one's about a girl. She's got a drinking and or drug problem. She hooks up with this shady dude. This, uh, this is him. Um, this is Trevor. Uh, you told him about me. Okay, just a little bit. Right, okay. Hey, hey how man. are you? Good. This is my brother, Matt, and this is his boyfriend, Colin. Hey. Hey. Nora, the roommate. He's like, I know this abandoned warehouse and there's something in there. Let's break in and steal whatever is in there. Totally abandoned, except for one last shipment. And surprise, surprise, what's in there is the lament configuration. And she takes it, and her brother ends up getting taken by the Cenobites. And so she wants to try to get them back. The film's pretty low budget. Uh, you know, there's an opening, quick opening scene with the Cenobites, but then there's a lot of talking, a lot of character development about, oh, she's got this problem with a uh, substance abuse problem. And, oh, she's got a brother that's trying to be supportive. Missy tonight. Where'd you go? Oh. Drinking. The main character, she's pretty irritating. You love having something to fix so that you can feel like a big success in the shitty okay, apartment. Okay. I didn't like her. Turns out she's a Nepo baby. Her mom is an actress that does a lot of voice work, including uh, she's the voice for Bobby Hill on King of the Hill. So although this actress, she's gotten work, I can't imagine that it's on her own merits. I mean, I did not like her at all. I, uh, you know, she's got, you know, uh, doesn't have much going for her, in my opinion. Um, so the other thing that kind of makes it maybe a remake is that they went with a woman playing the role of Pinhead, but who says Cenobites can't really change their appearance? Um, most of the movie falls into the trap, which the sequels I did see kind of also fall into of just sort of focusing on the gore and not really the sort of interestingness of like, Oh, they're not really good or evil. They're just interested in this intersection of pain and pleasure. But to be honest, even Clyde Barker himself kind of did a lot of that got rid of that stuff and ignored on the gruesomeness and evil and like the comic book sequels that I've read that he wrote. Um, I mean, but but for me, that was what made it interesting, that the Cenobites weren't really demons. They were just these, this sort of force. And it is about this idea of intersection of pain and pleasure. And they're more like um, genies that sort of grant wishes, but the wishes always have a, a downside. Um, the film does allude to that it, near the end, um, but most of it is the Cenobites are just evil demons so yeah the film tries to put a new wrinkle on it 
by making each of the shapes. The puzzle boxes has its own name. So technically, the lament configuration is just one of the shapes. The other shapes have their own name, and each one of them is associated with the... Life, knowledge, love, sensation, power, resurrection. It's almost kind of uh, tarot-y or something like that. Um, that ends up making it more of a game. If you can survive to each level, then maybe you can escape at the end. Which, it makes the plot a little more straightforward. Play the game and you can win. It's, you know, it's Jumanji. Um, visually, once they do get started, there's some interesting things. They end up going to this mansion that's been put in this kind of uh, cage that sort of echoes uh, the box, the puzzle box. Some of the kills are fun. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, apparently Echo has something to say about it. Echo, stop. Well, talk about that was more that was scarier than anything else in the movie. Um, because the movie, most of the kills end up being like peeling back the skins and stuff, which gets repetitive. So is it bad? No, not really. Is it good? No, not really. Is it even memorable? Not really. So I'm going to give Hellraiser one thumb up. It is a step up from most of the sequel films. More like. Meh, Razor. What do you think, Echo? Now she ain't got nothing to say. <laughs>